racers, Marshall Pruitt, everything we are doing this weekend at St. Petersburg, opening IndyCar race of the weekend, all powered by Shell in their new 100% renewable fuel mic <laughs> in every IndyCar. I wanted to do this last year. I failed, but darn it, round one of 2023, Mike, we're gonna get this started. Something called Stints and Stops with ah. Chip Ganassi Racing's Mike Hull. Mr. Hull, race strategist for 11,000 time champion Scott Dixon. He's one of the best on pit lane at knowing how many stops are we gonna have? What's the general range and laps? How many think we can do? What kind of yellow predictability might there be? So. This is episode one. We're going to try and do this at every round. So, Mike, what are we thinking? How many stops should this day be? What does history tell us? Well, Marshall, if we were standing on the porch at Princeton with the, uh, with the mathematicians, they would tell you you want to do two stops to win the race. Two. You want to do two. Are you going to do two? That's what's always fun about this thing because we don't know. Yeah. Uh, I wish we did. It would make it a lot easier. You need to get to lap 33 or 34 somehow to okay. make it a two-stopper. That's at the front end, or you need to be able to do that at, at the back end to make Oops. that happen. To make that happen, the uh, <laughs> uh, some people will start on uh, alternate tires. Some people will start on black tires. If you're if you start on black tires, you you want there to be a yellow on lap 20, say 20, because everybody in alternates are going to come that yellow will definitely extend you to lap 35 or 36. Uh, so watch for that. The, the second thing you probably need to watch for is the fact that we think there's gonna be more people backing up. And so what happens is people cycle out of the pits on fresh tires is how patient they are because the way that you create track position is with patience. And so backing up in terms of intentionally reducing pace, saving fuel, a combination just, of the two? Based on what's going on here has gone on this weekend, there's a lot of people that are probably going to have a on full fuel with uh, tire, tire deg. They're going to back up and wow. they're going to back up into the people that are coming out of the pits. You lose a half a lap here uh, on a green stop. Wow. Uh, so if you think about that, that means if, if you leave the pit lane, you need to be ahead of the people while you're pitting that are at turn eight or turn nine because they're going to find you and pit out when you're on cold tires. So that's also going to probably play into what goes on. And uh, any kind of motion that happens during that, that sequence uh, could determine the outcome of the race. Wow. Last quick thing for you, Mike. I know you, your team, pretty much every team does a historical dive. When do the cautions tend to fall here? Again, there's no guarantee they'll play out that way, but what do you know in terms of a history of, of yellows and what we might expect? Well, the last two years we've seen 8% yellow. 6%, 6 8%. Uh, prior to that, it was 8 The average is 18%, but prior to that, it was 20%. So, How does he know the percentages? Uh, You're killing me, Hull, but I love it. That's why we're here. Yeah, but you know what? You open the window, and the percentages go right out the window as soon as the race starts, in fairness. But you can kind of see a trend. And so you look for the trends about when the yellows do fall. And guess where they fall? They fall around the time that people are pitting because impatience on the racetrack causes the heat. Um, so that's what you have to be very, very careful about. If you're close on your fuel number, you're close on pitting, if people start to dive for the pits and you don't, uh, you, you could be leading and end up uh, on the pit exchange 15, 16, 17th and you never get it wow. back. Wow. You never get it back. Uh, so it's street racing, but it, street racing has history. It's not like uh, going to your favorite convenience store and playing the lottery. There's a lot more to it than that. So uh, I enjoy it. Gonna, I, I know that people are, that are watching us this morning will watch it on NBC at, uh, I think it starts 12. 12 12.30. 12, the, I think the broadcast starts 12. Uh, yep. High noon, Eastern time. People on the West Coast will be having brunch. Yep, get up. Uh, people on the East Coast will have lunch. And uh, I don't know about worldwide coverage, but they'll be doing something else. Amen. Uh, staying up late for the Formula One race, maybe. Something uh, like so, that. Uh, Good yeah, stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun to race here. All right. Well, episode one of Stints and Stops with Mike Hull is done. <laughs> Our dear friend referred to him for years as IndyCar Yoda. So we all just got smarter thanks to you. And uh, we'll do this again here in a couple of weeks when we get to uh, Sebring doing yeah. IMSA. Ah. And then we got Texas and then we got yeah. all kinds of stuff. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll speak yeah. to you soon. Thank you, everybody.